How are you, Karen? Are you good? Are you well? I'm here. Well, I'm good. Yeah. And that is a joy and a thrill for all of us. Now, last time I saw you, this was mm -hmm. not on your face. Is this a COVID beard we're growing? No, this, this isn't like on purpose. This is not like a cute little, I'm going to grow out my beard and it's going to be fun. <laughs> this is, I don't have time. I've been meaning to shave for days before I, you know, came on your show, which is, I don't know what that means. I, I opened up a laptop and press a button. Yes. So here I am. Yes. Uh, um, it, which, by the way, none of this is real. It's like, I'm on the late, late show tonight. No, I'm not. I'm sitting in my boxes in front of my computer. This is no different. Um, but I asked my wife, I said, like, should I? I don't think I have time to shave. Should I? And she said, you look scraggly, which I guess is her way of saying, yes, shave. But um, I like I it. I got to be honest. I'll, shut up. No, no I don't, won't. Nobody... No, I won't. I won't. This isn't me being a, a lying talk show host. This is me it's being real. I'm in favor of the beard. Gang, what do we think? Yeah. 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 It's a round of applause. Yeah, yeah it's a round of applause. Yeah. Group of liars. Group of just a no. giant bunch of liars. No, I disagree. That's actually the most they've applauded in three and a half weeks. <laughs> Which tells Everybody's you more bored. about the show than it does the beard. <laughs> now, you've been hungering down. You're in New York. What has life... Because you've got an 11-month-old. What's life been like, hungering down with a, you know, a baby? You know, like, you're not supposed to complain about this stuff because no. we're healthy and everything is good and all that, but, you know, I still spend half my day complaining. Mm -hmm. um, you know, half of life is just, wow, this is amazing, and the other half is I'm going to... It's going to melt. I'm just... It's going to... Brain's gonna pour out of my ears. Um, our baby for the first couple months of the lockdown just wasn't sleeping, and my wife wasn't sleeping, and I was growing this, and I was growing this, and um, <laughs> it was just intense. Uh, but we got the baby sleeping now. Uh, oh, I got so I rented this little apartment downstairs where I am right now because our apartment is this little one bedroom, 600 square foot, tiny apartment which is barely suitable for a couple, and then we throw a baby that isn't sleeping in it. And uh, so I rented this little studio down here um, for a couple of reasons. So in order to like spend the extra money, I had to like justify it. So sure. I was like, okay, if one of us gets sick, uh, we'll have to like self-quarantine down here. That's one. Very smart. Another work stuff, things like this, which is great. And the other was to get this face out of my wife's face. Right. Which is a... A loose quote of hers. She, mm. she was a lot more cursing involved. Yes. But to get this away from her. I do think that's him. I do think that's important. I think you've made a very, very wise choice there. You know. Yeah. And how yeah. much of your day would you say you're spending in the basement? Uh, well, my wife sort of took it over, and, um, and you know, you don't see it here, but I put some of my things, like you know, my Nintendo 64, and like some crazy stuff down here like I thought I, I in my mind I'm, I'm gonna go down here at the end of the night and play video games and it's gonna be a little dungeon she goes no I'm gonna sleep down there so she sleeps down here right at night and I I'm up in case the baby wakes up which is fair because my wife takes on the majority of the duties so you know I'm, yeah. I'm the night time I'm the night watch it sounds like by you're having a great time oh look at that look at that I love that the mug made it to the basement it made it to the basement. I now, yesterday, it. I want to talk to you about this, because yesterday was your brother Macaulay's 40th birthday. Home Alone was trending all over Twitter. And that was obviously <laughs> the first movie that you were in. You were eight years old when you made that film. It's a big seven. Yeah, just to correct you, just because that's really important, is to correct you that it was seven, not eight. <laughs> this is just, it's just ruined the entire thing. Let's... <laughs> You were, uh, <laughs> you, were, <laughs> you were seven years old. If I'm right Thank in thinking, you. if I'm right in thinking, you were seven years old when you shot that film. Um, uh, yeah. Now, Home Alone <laughs> is a massive film in our house all year round, really. Um, can you, as a family, ever sit and enjoy that movie like the rest of us? Absolutely. Like every really? Christmas, that's just. Yeah, I think we used to watch it a bunch, even as a kid, so it just has that same sort of nostalgia. Um, yeah, it's the, it, to me, I didn't really know what the movie was about when we were doing it, so it was a fresh, brand-new movie when I saw it. I literally... Do you know the, there's a part in the movie where there's uh, the kid who gets his head counted incorrectly? Yes. And he says, bye, bring me back something French. I thought the movie was about that kid. <laughs>
<laughs> but of course, you're seven. It's not like you're reading it going, uh, John, in um, scene 63, I really feel I'm making odd. You're just sort of turning up and doing whatever they say. I start as the bedwetter, but then do, is there a goal somewhere for yeah. Fuller? <laughs> <laughs> I love that you thought it was just about the kid who just... <laughs> I had no idea. And it made sense when I saw it. I remember seeing it in the theater at the premiere, and I was dying laughing, and I was like, oh, that makes sense, because Mac was on set all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only did a few days. He was really in a lot, given it's about the other kid. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's we... funny, it's like my brother's birthday. He says he's really proud that he ages people. Yeah. So, you know... When he turned 30, people were like, oh, my God, I'm old. So now he loves telling people, hey, everyone, I'm 40. Well, that was, a, that was a... I would say that's... For me, it's the best use of Twitter I've ever seen, <laughs> which is a low bar, but it's the best use of Twitter to just, to just go, hey, want to feel old? I'm 40. It really did. It was quite... It was a, a sensational thing. Uh, it really was. Now, we have to congratulate you, Kieran, on your first Emmy nomination <laughs> for Succession. Richly deserved. I mean that. Richly deserved. I mean it. you, James. You know what? Just eat it. Just, just eat these. Just have it and eat them. I mean it. I mean it. It's... I really... <laughs> have you even seen the show? Yo, you're such... You, that's, you know that that isn't true. Because you're... I'm going to say you're the only guest we've had on the show where... Because I came and sat in your dressing room, and I think I'd been in there for about 40 minutes, and I remember thinking, oh, Kieran must feel like he's at a Q&A. <laughs> like, I was really just only asking you questions about succession. I know, and I was trying to give you those little cues, like, maybe you should just leave now. You know, I'd like some time. <laughs> yeah, and then, I was, and, then, and then I would do that thing, like, ah, see, that was just like Roman, the way you did that. <laughs> now... <laughs> But, yeah, you did geek up the show. You totally geeked. I believe you watch it. But you're up against two of your co-stars. Now, what is yeah. that like? Is it... I, I, you don't strike me as a, a competitive guy in any way, but when these things happen, do you ever find that? Has it got competitive uh, with them at all? No, of course not. Like, it's just, you know, it's more nominations for Team Succession. But then uh, I did an interview, which is fun when you do print interviews, when you try to make jokes, uh, that they can just print it. Yes. Um, without the whole joke part, because it ended. And I remember, like, I have, I, I sort of have a filter, like a little one, but it doesn't always work. It was like, well, how does it feel? And I gave that answer, like, it's great. More nominations for Succession. I'm really happy. And then I thought of a joke. I said, don't do it. It's print. And then I was like, yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, I guess if Nick Brown wins, I'll kick him in the balls. Uh, but except then, you know, I realized that I actually can't kick him in the balls because he's so tall. Um, so I had to, like, switch it to punch. Because I think I can just do a straight punch right to the nuts. <laughs> um, and that's what gets printed, is, like, he'll punch Nick Braun in the balls if he wins an Emmy. <laughs> Which I will now, because I said it, so if it wins, it's... And how does Nick feel about it? Does Nick know it's a joke? I don't know. He, I, um, we don't really talk, because, uh, uh, no, uh, but he knows. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really talk just because of the violence between us. <laughs> You know, it's tense. It's a competition. You know, I'm just trying to beat him. You know, For sure. trying to beat him out. For sure. You know, that's why I thought I'd grow up here, try to look. <laughs> now, do you have any knowledge of what happens in the next series? Like, does anybody tell you? No, and I don't want to know. It's not. It's. I feel like it's none of my business. <laughs> well, I cannot wait for it.